Okay, Aries, Leo, Sag. I'm getting right into it here. Uh, last of the week here. Okay, Aries, Leo, Sag may not resonate with everyone. Probably resonate more with people in my affinity room. Nonetheless, Aries, here we go. First card, spirituality is the topic. <laughs> We're going deep. Uh, the first card is death. So we have a transition here that has come to the surface to be seen. Um, yeah, we're transitioning out of something here. Next card, the Hierophant. Well, might be a marriage or having to do with something we um, deem highly spiritual or need guidance for. All of this can apply. They're making me note that key there. Um, and again... The Hierophant can be like the symbol of a religious leader or someone that we put in high esteem. We may need counsel from this. Um, yeah, we may be going through an ending here where we need an outside perspective is what I'm getting. So be aware of that. Um, yeah, the sense they're giving me is they're going, we are not open to this, but we should be seeking this to get our head right, uh, wrapped in the right way. Here is the sense I'm getting. So next, the Wheel of Fortune. Again, <clears throat> things are changing and uh, yeah, things are changing. Sorry, guys, the glare in here. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I got to fix that. Okay, we're looking at the fortune card. Um, fate has changed our direction here is the sense that I'm getting. We had a, a blunt ending here. They're showing me that uh, the sword here. It's like, yeah, that's the ending. <laughs> and we're walling off to the outside world here because of this decision that was made, put upon us, one of the two. Um, it could be in spite that I'm picking up, but it could also be a decision we made. Um not knowing necessarily if it was for our highest good or not is what I'm getting. Ultimately, this is so. It is for our highest good, but we, we do not understand this as of yet. Whew. Okay. Um, there's more that wants to be said here. Just give me a minute. This transition, I feel like we're very much... Um, so a lot of conflict around this decision. Um, again, I don't know if it's being put upon us or we're fighting a decision or regretting a decision we made, but we made it so we have to move forward. I don't know what's going on here, but there's a sense here of fighting whatever direction. It's almost like we don't have a stronghold in anything. We're just kind of in opposition of anything that comes at us is really what I'm getting. Um, again, needing counsel outside of ourselves to help us gain traction in some kind of area. And then the Wheel of Fortune is really about things that are changing. So if we've been living a certain way for a certain amount of time, this is going to flip. So if we're safe and secure, we're going to be unsafe and insecure. If we've been going in safe and into, then things are going to calm down, you know. There's an abrupt change is what they said, quote unquote, abrupt change that's coming. So on the death card to uh, look into that more, we have the rigid. <laughs> that is about burying off. And what did I say here? I feel very strongly that um, we are walling, like making a stand and walling. Everybody else can take off, right? Eat rocks, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, this is what I'm getting. Now, this is further, um, how you say, further energy for that same point is uh, being rigid in, in our stance here and ending. I feel like now I feel it's the Aries that has put this ending down. And now this has to be, uh, you know, respected, if that's the right word. I, I don't feel like there's any respect going on in this area, but has to be followed. Like, you back off. I put a line down. That's it. Back off. We're walling ourselves against others, okay? Now on the spirituality card, which I feel there's a complete lack of here, but nonetheless, a need for the Aries for counsel to look to someone of higher, um, 
Hmm. Someone outside of themselves that has a higher hold on things or a higher vision or can see the forest for the trees. <clears throat> on top of that, I get oath. I feel like the Aries may be in a position where they've made an oath to themselves and to others as well. And it may be connected. They're going, it goes back to this card, the rigid stance that we've taken here, not willing to let anybody in, pushing everybody out. This is kind of the thing. Um, again, a need for this, but I feel strongly that the Aries will not be open to it anyway, but there is a need for this. So those that are, how you say open to it um, can gain progress from it really. But there's an oath here. And I feel like the oath is on the side of uh, resentment and bitterness. Like if there's nobody, I'm not. And it may be having to do with the barrier that they put. Like I made an oath and I'm not going back or I'm not crossing or you're not crossing or I'm not accepting da da da. Now on the wheel, we have individuality, and I'm going to read this as I feel. Because I feel like the individuality uh, on guidance alone here, I feel has more to do with us feeling alone at this time in our perspective and what we're standing up for, what we're walling off for. I feel like the individuality is speaking to me of being by our own, on our own. We made an oath. Nobody else sees our perspective. Nobody else can empathize with our point of view. Nobody else is seeing from our eyes. Okay, truly. And we may even be getting so much so to the opposition. There's opposition saying, no, you shouldn't do this. Da, da, da. Again, 47. I'm going to read here. My goggles on. So, no two snowflakes can ever be the same, just as you are special and unique too. This is something to celebrate. You've marked one young vampire in a way that is unique, seeing her apart from all others. Choosing, choosing her symbol is important because it reminds you to reflect on your unique qualities. It also reminds you not to compare yourself with others. This is a futile exercise because no one is the same, no one's beauty greater or lesser than yours. No one's life better or less than yours. Others may seem happy doing things a certain way, but if you feel as if you're compromising yourself to fit in, don't. People will love you for who you are, not someone you're trying to be. Your task here is only to be yourself. This is a powerful sign. Now, I don't get, I get a lot of conflict and a lot. So I get a lot of chaos here when I'm reading into the energy. So I don't know if you're really tapping in to or fighting for or walling off for your own individuality but the sense are giving me through this card is that yeah we are in some kind of way we are still needing counsel above and beyond our perspective but we're tapping into that in some level okay so on the rigidity here mm, 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 mm. we have the venom snake right and this is about going outward and lashing at people uh, with bitterness and resentment and a lot of bad energy. So this is really where I feel, unfortunately, the Aries is the root cause of all of the chaos going on. They're creating chaos, going outward, striking others. Uh, yeah, bitterness and resentment. Okay, so the oath, on top of the oath, what do we get there? We have 21 obstacles. So there's a sense here we made an oath to someone, something, ourselves. Um, we're standing up for that oath. And it is creating obstacles in our path, no less. We may have made a promise again to ourselves or others. We're standing up for that. But I feel like it may not be the right decision, unfortunately. And that oath, man, we're not going that we're gonna stay true to that for whatever reason. Now, this is all revolving around that oath is the center card. So this is all revolving. The problems are coming. Why? Because we made an oath. Why? Because we're going outward and and defending that, why? Because of judgment. You know, all these things are coming at us to kind of signal that we're not going in the right way, but we're not adapting, we're not changing. Okay, that's what I'm getting now. 47, individuality, again, feeling very alone. Why? Because we might not be making the right decision spiritually. 
but it doesn't matter because we made our mind up. We made an oath, and this is the direction we're going. So we're going to be alone in that. And that's, too, what I get from this is we don't care for alone. We've made our decision, and that's it. On top of that, we get the 23, which is the mice. Now, that talks about little annoyances. And I feel like the little annoyances are really going to be universally driven. I feel like the universe, people outside of you, your whole environment is trying to create a different direction for you to go. But we are not willing to do this, not willing to change our tune in any shape, way, shape or form. And again, this is creating obstacles. So the more obstacles we have in our path, it really is trying to lead us in another way. So the sense here is, uh, you know, again, I get from here the individuality saying, yeah, I'm alone. I don't care. I'm still standing true to who I am and what I want and what I'm going to get. And even though it's not spiritually highly aspected, um, I'm going to continue going in that direction. And the universe is going, that's fine. You'll find little annoyances. You're just not going to be able to get above. We've got a lot of challenges and little things that are going to be showing you the way. Um, I feel like for this Aries, the tower is just not a big deal. It's part of the process. And they continue to tower after tower. So I feel like no matter how, you know, we know that going outward in resentment is wrong. And we know that we've come across obstacles we're going to overcome them and we're going to keep going no matter how much people slow us down even if we're going in the wrong direction and as we head into the spiritual side <laughs> we are damned and determined to go in a certain way now the 10 wow this is a complete different feel here this is the 10 of air and i'm gonna read doing a lot of readings from these uh yeah a lot of reading from these cards lately <laughs> 216 I feel like this is going to carry a lot of what you the energy that you need to incorporate in order to make headway progress in a good direction but nonetheless, individuation, self-actualization, liberation, altered perception, new paradigms, paradox, and potential, okay? So the process of individuation leads to becoming oneself, to stepping away from external forces that we believe define us, to becoming an independent, independent being who recognizes and embraces their own uniqueness and individuality. And this, the, the sense they've given me is we may be true to something we said, but it's not true to who we are. It may have been driven by someone outside of us telling us we got to do this. Oh, we make an oath. Okay. But it wasn't our initial decision to do this. So we can, ch that, that can be changed. And I mean, just like that, that's an interesting um, thing. Okay. Uh, removing a mask. If we remove a mask we present to the public so that we are liked and respected and accepted, the face we wear so we fit in and belong. Okay, hold on here. I'm not reading it. It's not making sense. <laughs> Removing a mask is, is uh, that we prevent to the public so that we are liked and respected and accepted. The face we wear, so we fit in and belong. They're talking about removing the, the two ways of being, like not being true to self here. It's actually not being true to the individual that we are. One, because we're fighting for out, things outside of us is the sense I get instinctively. So no longer are our public face and private life very different. We present our face to the world and it, if it, it is not liked, then so be it. If it makes us black sheep in a flock of white sheep, then so be it. Okay, so there's saying, so some may be in, in the struggle of lifting this, or some may be in a place where they were pretending to be someone they weren't, but now, um, unfortunately, it's kind of the darker side that's coming to bear. They're just showing it all. I don't care anymore. I don't want to be nice. I don't want, this is what I'm hearing. I don't want to be nice. I don't want to play nice. I'm. This is what I'm after, and I'm. I don't care who knows. 
Like this is what it is. And it's almost like they're trying to convince themselves <laughs> like their inner uh, spirit is trying to come forward and say, you know, this isn't reasonable. This isn't rational. Um, but they're going, I don't care anymore because some of these Aries might've been putting on two faced ways, whether this way in private and this way in public. And now it's like, no, we're, we're not being, we're not playing nice anymore is the sense I'm getting. Okay. For this energy. So here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, no longer are they, are they different? If it makes us black sheep in a flock of white sheep, then so be it. We would rather be honest and accepted by the few than to be what family or society expects. So it may be family or society that is pushing us or repressing us to a degree that we just kind of blew our top and said, that's it. I don't care what everybody, da, da, da. So to, to a certain degree, this is a good thing because we're revealing our truth, but we have to watch how we go from there, right? How we lash out because that snake card is highly not beneficial for karmic reasons. <laughs> Individuation is being who we are meant to be as opposed to being the person society tells us we should be. It's breaking free from caring about what people think of us because we love who we are and we do it with our life. We are free, liberated, because we are not bound by others' opinions of us or our actions or constraints to society or impediments of our past. So, you know, this could um, relate to relationships as well. We could have been locked down or told to act certain ways, and suddenly we're just not going to do that. We're not going to behave with those boundaries anymore. Um, so it also talks about, integrating conscious and unconscious soul and shadow which is what i get highly masculine feminine creating a whole where the self resides at the center so no longer does duality separate and divide all is in harmony and working in unison you are you whole complete and evolving evolution is not a linear process it is circumambulatory process of viewing the self and seeing it from multiple perspectives and accepting and integrating all of the facets and aspects of the whole. No aspect is ugly or beautiful, none good or bad, better or worse. Everything has its place and purpose as part of the beautiful whole. To individuate is to understand paradox, accept that you are one human to be whole and complete is to be paradoxical. So I think the sense here that I'm getting is just the fight, the dark and light side of this Aries is really coming to bear here. I feel very much the predominance of the dark side coming forth, but we need to go there in order to know what is truly out of whack, and then we need to balance it out. So I feel like we're kind of on the edge going right field here, and going into the dark side and just, uh, you know, hitting everything with fire and going outward and just wah. And we need to kind of play in that, unfortunately, um, before we realize that it's not the best, right? So learn by doing this, getting, again, this is about opposing, but I get a very lovey-dovey feeling here. Like this is the whole point of this paradoxical recognition is to realize that we are imbalanced right we are out of whack on the dark side and we need to rein that in right Whew, okay <laughs> 11 yeah of air again we're staying in that air element so very much in our head a lot of this stuff is going on and um hmm. this is one backwards by the way but anyway, self-awareness, universal consciousness, understanding, insight, visions, imagination are connected to the our connection to the universal consciousness or mind. It signifies the importance of knowing thyself. For in truly knowing thyself, one will know both the universe and the power of the void. What if the universe we dwell? is actually the mind of another being. What if the universe is in reality a God mind? 
and we the creation of another being's imagination. What if within our minds there exists universes within universes where cultures that we dream of and imagine dwell in the same way we do here upon earth and within our minds are more universes like fractals where the same pattern repeats, creates, our mind contains a universe and within that universe are creatures and beings who also have universes within their minds. The universe in which we dwell is one of billions existing within the mind that is yet another. Pattern repeats in both directions exponentially creating an infinite number of universes and realities. Now ponder, what if we looked within and discovered that within the realms of our minds we create new worlds or realities within our belief? We choose to believe in something and a new world that mirrors that belief is born. We stop believing and the world either evolves with our beliefs or ceases to be completely. So I think that's the, the rule here that they're trying to get through is all of that stuff that's going on in the mind. And I feel like the Aries is really in a dark place right now in their mindscape. Now I'm hoping they're not going outward, but that snake usually talks about going outward and attacking people verbally, you know, sharp tongue, all of that talks about that kind of an energy. So not only are we harboring it in our mind, we're spitting it outward to our universe and then we're perpetuating it by not coming from a loving place, right? So I'm going to move on here. Ah, uh, the maiden. Okay, there's some lighter energy. Give me a minute. Again, very much up in our head about nasty, dark side of things. And we get, yeah, the maiden, right? She's innocent and she's kind of playing with the bunnies over there. Like, what's going on? <laughs> This is about independence, fertility, self-confidence, self, -confidence, self a lot of self stuff here going on. But unfortunately, the, the, the charge that we're carrying is a negative. So we're not making progress outside of us because we're carrying a negative charge within. Okay. So hopefully she walks, this maiden walks an unfamiliar path, but does so with confidence and grace. She has been taught by those around her that it is not selfish or conceited to follow her dreams and actively work to manifest her goals and desires. She does so without needing permission from anyone. And I feel like uh, I'm going to end it there because th there's a lot more to this maid maiden that's of innocence and whatnot. But the sense I'm getting here is we are kind of misdirected in what is exactly that someone told us or we have a confidence that we carry that make that allows us to go forth in this energy that includes going out negatively towards others that is just not correct it's just not it's disinformation here so they're they're expanding on this energy to a degree that it does not serve them okay I'm saying third person here, but it does not serve the Aries, you. It does not serve you. But we're not in realization of this because we feel we have a right to it. But So this is the loop that we're going to be making until we realize this error in judgment. Until we realize that we don't have a right to certain things, we're not going to understand. And again, no need for adaptation here. They feel very... Uh, and Aries are very confident in the way that they go forward. If it's too selfish, they just do not understand this. And this is the sense I'm getting is we're overboard here, but because we're on our darker side and we're gaining from a selfish vantage point, we don't see that. Okay. So on top of that 10 energy, again, the air of, um, you know, there's a little void of darkness that she's staring at, get caught up in, but there's a whole bunch of light that wants to, uh, the paradox is right, a dark and light. We get movement and meditation. This would be an Aries card. Celebrate and honor your physical body through dance and movement. This may be um, some kind of a way that we can de-stress or de- yeah, distress, get rid of negative energy, move, take action and movement. In the literal sense, I do see people, they're showing me people dancing, like in a 
studio and whatnot. So this may be one way that you can get out your frustrations in a healthier manner is to literally dance them away in a, in a movement way where we're not attacking people. And this can kind of be a creative way to, to dissipate the negative energy. Now, on top of all of that head, yeah, all of that workings, that's all air energy, all of that energy is going upwards but unfortunately what i'm picking up on is just not good stuff it's a lot of rumbling and rattling about you're gonna pay and i'm gonna i want it this way and da 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 i have the water elemental i allow my body and mind and spirit to flow intuitively through changes and that's the sense i get here is we have had again whether we put down the change or someone put it upon us we are just not happy it, that's the simple fact and I feel like the Aries has made a, a point to say that I am not accepting things as the way they are. They're going outward telling everybody this and creating chaos if anybody challenges that. And the thing here is we really have to get in touch with our emotional center and understand why the anger. Anger is really repressed sadness that has not been bled out. It, it turns into anger. So we have to deal with that on some form or another. Um, again, Dancing may be a form that one, uh, you know, some of these areas can tap into that will release some of that in a different way than literally crying or literally because the actions, right, can, 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 because Aries is action and force and all of that stuff. And that action of movement can dissipate some of that negative energy. Where's it coming from? The water element. Our emotions not been dealt with here. It's healthy to do so, but I feel like they've been repressed or yeah, you know, maybe we just don't even know how to deal with them. We've had our thoughts and we can't translate them to emotion or don't want to. And that's creating anger and resentment and bitterness. We're just going out in that. So there's no healing process here per se when we're in that mode. So the maiden, again, she's kind of walking innocently through here. But I do not feel this is uh, where she sits again what they're giving me here is uh, self-expression and self-exploration and a need to be taught by those around her in a way that is graceful like grace here it needs to be taught is what i'm feeling on top of the maiden when we get sun goddess I celebrate the sunrise and recognize the healing energies of the sun. So again, this is very interesting because they have that goddess energy sitting on top there of her, whatever, right here. It's kind of a goddess symbol. Um, and it, it's like the new dawn, a new day, fresh energy, an unwillingness to accept what has come forth to us. I feel like, again, whether the Aries put their foot down or somebody put their foot down against them, they're unwilling to accept this new direction. And this is kind of like give in, give in to that. Wake up and um, thank the new day for coming. You know, thank, thank the new refreshing energy that's forth. There is a sense that there's a little bit of that in here, like I'm getting little glimpses of that, but it's being shut down by anger, resentment, bitterness, and dark energy. But if we let it come, it can help cleanse us. Okay. Whew. Okay. On top of that movement, again, um, thinking that through the Aries movement would help them. And I mean, if you're not a dancer, maybe, um, what do you call that? Jogging or on a treadmill or exercising or going to the gym, like being physically active. This is how you can run off some of that energy. Follow the moon. Again, what is the moon about? Emotions. What is water about? Emotions. What are those waves are trying to make you aware of your emotions and your emotional state? Because I feel like the um, areas that I'm reading here, we are just so far from our emotional state. I don't know that we've ever really connected on a level here to our emotional center. What's that? I don't deal with emotions. Boom. <laughs> Unless it's anger, rage and resentment and bitterness. You know, this kind of stuff is what I'm picking up. Again, this is for the week. So it just might have been something that blew out and we, you know, we're really nasty, but it's just not, we're not clinging to good energy here. So on top of the water, what do we get? Embrace the feminine, right? What is the feminine about? She's about compassion. She's about, um, what do you call that? 
<laughs> compassion, love, caring, devotion, having the best interest of others in mind as well. All of that good groovy motherly kind of stuff. You know, this is what they're wanting you to embrace that energy there. Emotions and compassion, period, for yourself and for others. You know, if we made a mistake here, we put a foot down here and we don't, now all of a sudden we want to, um, I don't want to say change direction, but it's almost like we feel, for those that have had a decision put upon us, put upon them, the Aries, they're standing there going, well, I had no say and I, that's not what I want. So they're fighting it. And those that put a foot down, the opposition may be going, okay, then that's what it is. And then they're fighting that. They're fighting that the opposition is not, like there's a sense of conflict here I don't understand. But it's like they're getting mad at somebody for accepting the boundary they put down, if that makes any sense. I think those involved will understand. But nonetheless, so this fight no matter, no matter, this fight. And the sun goddess, what do we get on her? Let the emotions flow. Exactly. This is what's going to lead to our salvation, healing, all of that. Letting emotions flow. If we need to use physical activity to start to bring that out, then do so. We're going to have to connect with our emotional center no matter in order to create a better forward. We do not want this chaos. We do not want it. So therefore, we're going to have to give in certain ways. And I feel like the Aries put their foot down, but it's in all the wrong areas where it's blocking our spiritual growth. They they're maybe attaining physical things, but it's blocking us spiritually. And we really are headed to a spiritual heart centered kind of place. And if the Aries aren't there yet, it's going to be problematic. So chaos ensues. So in order to get rid of the chaos, we need to go to our heart. We need to feel any hurts that we've had over the last while that, that need to be felt. And that will dissipate the anger and resentment that we lash out to others with. And things will start to run smoother. And then be thankful for the day that you have to see all of that. And the new way that I feel like there's just not an appreciation of the new way that we're going but deep inside, the Aries knows, yeah, this is good stuff. I'm good. But they refuse to be happy about it. So I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense. So the fortune card, <laughs> man, uh, wish. Your heart's desire is ready to come true. But I feel like if we're in this energy, it's just, it's always going to be one step ahead of us. It's always going to be not quite there. But nonetheless, okay, the wish, there's a wish, a heart's desire that wants to come true here. We need to feel our emotions from our emotional center. We need to get rid of the bitterness and resentment that I'm getting. It's just heavy. Um, that's when this wish will come true. Again, it's not broken yet, right? They haven't broke that bone. Uh, and the sense is the work hasn't been done here to calm ourselves and to not only to, just to calm, but to process emotions that we've had from previous experiences and there's one here that just happened that needs to be processed in a proper manner so until that's done but again the wish is just around the corner of that so the quicker that we do that jump into a compassionate mode the quicker we're going to get our wish okay we aries okay oh man now on to leo Jumping in, first card for Leo, where are we sit in two of swords, stalemate, compromise is needed. So are we holding another one, holding fast to some kind of idea here that we've got on our mind or a decision that needs to be made? I feel like we're kind of holding the line here. Next card, Eon, as <laughs> I learned how to spell that, 20. Yeah, this is kind of like the rising of the phoenix. So a sense of um, overcoming obstacles and, and coming into a great part where um, we can accept the greater things in life. Why? Because we've been challenged and we've overcome. We've also been to the low part of life here and we've come back around and we've made it through, right? And then we get the Prince of Wands, which, you know, golds... Uh, Boldly powering forward. 
Yeah, there's a sense here a decision is needs to be made, but I don't feel it's a contingent on your success. I feel like this decision is kind of outside of the realms of where we feel successful, where the Leo will allow themselves to feel. So there's a greater part of you. So if it's, uh, let's just say, uh, Leos, yeah, they're fire, right? So give me a minute. It may be that we've made a decision here uh, hmm, spiritually, but not yet let others in on it. And because of this, we are feeling successful and going forward. But it's like people are left out of the loop is the sense I'm getting. Oh. Because hmm. it's almost like... Okay, if we get a partner, it's almost like we're going to make a decision or, or compromise something with a partner or a person. And this could be business or whatever. And we've made our mind up in our mind and we feel quite good and we've gone down the road in the thought process. But we've yet to let that unleash on everybody else. It's like we have risen and made that decision, but we refuse to go outward in it. Now, we are going forward based on the decision that we made in our mind, but again, not telling no one. So I don't know. This is going to create um, things. <laughs> so as we go on the stalemate, again, this decision that's not been made, and I feel like it's in a verbal way, we have the high priestess of fire. So fire energy is about action. Again, I feel like the, the lack of taking action here. Just not in the Leo way, normally. Like, Leos would be more inclined to take action. The sense I'm getting here is a cheeky sense of ego. Like, I'm not going to let you know which direction I'm going. Because I want, I want to have the upper hand. Or I want to, this kind of a thing. I'm holding back for a reason. And it's for my benefit. And I'm not going to let you know about it. That's what I'm getting. And this is also attached to the energy of rising. Because we're holding that in, it's giving, and again, I hope it's not just in the ego here, but <laughs> then we get the high priestess of earth. Man, I'm going to do a little reading here. I'm going to read these both because there's words five and three. For five, which is the fire, inspiration and joy yeah so there's there's a sense again we're acting but inspiration and joy is something that brings this to us but the minute we speak outward it takes it away this is what i'm getting so i don't understand what that means but that's what i'm getting the high priestess of earth uh, talks about yeah the health and taking care of your body so uh, new regimes in that way. Hmm. Is this as simple as that? I was getting almost like a relational thing. But uh, this may be a domination of our own, um, like our own ways of being. Um, hmm. But interesting. There's something here that we are putting attention to that either we haven't for a long time and we're starting to do so now or we've had failures in the past and we're overcoming that and trying again okay this is what i'm getting now you put the fire on there and that talks about joy and whatever so maybe the way that we went about it in the past where we had um something fall apart on us was not in a joyful we didn't go about it with the joy and excitement that we are now and then again, we have um, the high priestess of earth talking about the physical body. So it has something to do with this or the changes in this way. Um, again, we could be talking about diets and exercise routines that maybe we failed in the past. But now we're going to take action and make sure that we don't fail. Why? Because we're doing it differently. We're coming from joy and excitement instead of like a need to... Um, you know, without joy and excitement, we've got joy and excitement that's backing us. It's 
we're powering forward. Okay, now on top of that, we get conclusion. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to read this from... Obviously, that's an ending or, or uh, a conclusion to something here. It's almost like we get fired up about something, and then all of a sudden there's an end that comes. So is this in a professional, personal, what kind of way is this? I feel like this has to do with our uh, the way that we look at ourselves. Um, you've come to the end of some experience in your life and are about to enter a new one. Do not resist the conclusion, for endings are important experiences to help you build a stronger foundation for a next adventure. This is also a warning to get all your facts before you draw conclusions. So this is talking like um, relational. Get your facts before you draw conclusions about someone. You can't know the whole story if you haven't read to the end. Remain open even when an ending is final or conclusion is correct. This is a sign that a new story is about to unfold. So there's some kind of an ending coming here. Now it's interesting to me, we have the fire element and the earth element. I don't know if the, we're taking activity in our own way to deal with it. i got to move forward here. Okay, five. High Priestess, what do we get there? Yeah, 18, loyalty. <laughs> so did we have an ending here because of loyalties or dis in that way? Fire Element is about activity and, and loyalty. Being actively loyal. On top of the earth, we got the love card. What in the mother? Trucker. loyalty within a loving relationship so why would it end right this is what we're talking about or is it a disloyalty the next one is on the ending it talks about 43 confusion so yeah something came to an end here and we don't know why is really the sense i get but there's loyalty here and we're going to clarify that on the spiritual side but there's a sense that a, and it's a relationship loving relationship loyal relationship we were loving we were loyal what happened it's gone this is what i'm getting um and there's a lot uh there's a lot of layers i think that's going on here like i feel like the leo is really on a a, a path of self empowerment we may be watching our diet and watching what we eat and on an exercise regime like really trying to look after our physical body in an active way and this may be something that we were doing for the relationship as well and you know it's even adds some more confusion like what do you mean i was i'm on the top of my game here i'm you know <laughs> working out and everything's going good and i'm loyal and i'm loving and what the hell happened like i thought this was all going good this is kind of what i'm getting is multifaceted okay we're gonna go to the spiritual side see if we can uncover some stuff here because i'm confused just as a leo <laughs> oh wow this guy's speaking now it is interesting to me this is the seven of earth this dude has got a lock that's interesting to me okay this guy's got a lock and the key around his neck now technically <laughs> that means that no woman can have the key or no man no other man can have the key because he's got it so does that mean that the partner that we were with, this is the instinct I'm getting here right away. Does that mean the partner that we were with was not emotionally available to us to a degree that they would want to lock it down? Because they got the key, they got the lock. What the hell? Like, you know, you're supposed to, the other one's supposed to have the lock, right? So just let me play this out here. Now he's also got a scythe with him, right? So cutting away. So I feel like, if there's some masculine feminine leos i feel like if you're a feminine leo you may have got cut away by a guy uh in a relationship here and you don't know why now he was carrying a lot of abundance the relationship may have carried a lot of abundance but notice what's on his back he's got a lot of burdens on his back so i feel like he really uh backed out of this relationship uh with that that was the deciding fact that's the thing that doesn't make sense here is there was burdens upon this man 
to a degree he couldn't. And it's not that he did or didn't like you uh, authentically. I think this can be revisited in the past as long as we don't uh, have too much bitterness and resentment. Again, there was something about endings, right? With, um, which one was it? Conclusions card was talking about watch the way we end. We could revisit. And the sense I get here is this man was conflicted, but not that he liked you, but because he had too much stuff going on. It's really what I get. Too much stuff going on. He couldn't focus. So he just backed out. Said, you know what? I can't deal with certain things here. I just can't deal. So he didn't put in any effort. He just backed out. Now, again, this could come at the future at a better date. But again, it confuses me when he's got the key and the lock and the scythe. It's like nobody can. And the sense they're giving me is uh, emotional unavailability. So I don't know. Um, let's see if that fits. Anyway, next card. Um, yeah, the one of earth. Isn't that interesting? New beginnings. Hmm. This man could be going off in new beginnings, not necessarily in relationship. Could be, could not be. Uh, the sense I get here, though, if he's got the key and the chain, like the, uh, sorry, the lock and the key, he's kind of not someone who's going to be looking for long term or a relationship period. He may stumble across you at a time when he wasn't, wanting a relationship and he forced it and now he had to pay the price because he had to back out of it because he knew it's almost like he knew that if i go into this and again you know leos are hard to resist if i go into this i'm going to regret it meaning i'm going to have to back out but he did it anyway because he was overriding right his instinct didn't want to refuse da 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 I'm going to read a little bit of that Ace of Earth here. See what's going on. I feel like it's going to give us an answer as to what's behind this dude. Okay. <laughs> New beginnings, gold, motivation, desire, preparation, opportunity. Starting a new, new financial or career opportunity. Now, this could be what this man like he i'm getting for some it's a physical move like he had to physically move for a job or whatnot and that would create a position where we're just not gonna i can't put forth what i need to but anyway when the ace of earth appears in a reading it represents a time of change and new beginnings career or home front this change is driven by a desire for financial security and independence for yourself and for those for whom you are responsible it's time to make preparations or plans of the future so that you are not challenged or placed under stress by the changes that are coming. What do you want to do with your life? What career path will allow you both to meet your responsibilities and be fulfilled? Are you more interested in financial reward than seeking a vocation or career that will stimulate you and make you happy? It is time for you to think of the outcome of your desire. Do you need to further your education qualifications or create more financial rewarding opportunities so i feel like this guy that's the energy behind this guy he's really thinking about finances and and whatnot may not have been as open as you know this kind of thing okay next card wow six is the mirroring looking at yourself analyzing self-analyzation and whatnot I feel like the Leo is doing this highly, but it may be best suited if this guy, if the partner that left or has cut things away, that they look at their self and their actions more deeply. Um, I think the Leo is, is actually taking it quite well uh, overall because the sense here is, is that this one's being a little insensitive or it may not be notably, or how do you say, forcefully insensitive as much as just doing what needs to be done and not telling anybody, you know, we're doing what we need to do. Oh, I got to move. Okay. Well, I didn't know you were moving that kind of thing where we're like not discussing openly. So there's the sense here of missing pieces. Nonetheless, on the spiritual side, on top of that six of earth. Yeah. Transformation again. Holy. <laughs> journeying within to meet my higher self and find my true happiness so 
there may be a lot, not only outside burdens upon this man, but there's a lot of internal stuff as well that he's got to connect to and transform with. So that may be part of, you know, and again, when I have that mirror, it makes me think of how you say twin soul relationships where sometimes we can be overwhelmed by the attraction. Again, I was getting a sense this guy went over and above his instinct to not go in because he wasn't ready and he did it. And then he goes, yeah, I'm still, I'm not ready. So now he had to back out. And this is um, him realizing that he has to transform in some kind of way. So he may be backing out to do, to allow himself to do that. He knows he needs to do that on his own. <sighs> New directions. What's going here. We have the root. I have everything I need to survive and grow on a physical plane. So there's absolutely something about a job change either for either one of you. Job is kind of getting in the way conveniently. I'm saying conveniently because if this is a twinned relationship, holy, I can't get. If this is a twinned relationship, there's a need for pause and reflection of, of each individual and this job or whatever's happening on the job front or career area where we're advancing or moving or shifting or whatever need to focus more there is kind of um, piggybacking on the fact that we do need to uh, isolate ourselves a little bit to grow and transform into maybe a higher financial bracket. I don't know, whatever, something that makes us feel more secure. Some men are like that. They need to feel secure before they can go outward into relationships. So on top of the mirroring and again, needing to self reflect and needing to look deeper into why our motivations, why we do things and, and who and what is outside of us and what we're doing it for. We have Earth Angel, guardian of Mother Earth and protect all who live on her. Hmm. Yeah, what do I get there? Huh. <clears throat> reflecting take time to reflect in nature really is what i'm getting take time out in nature if you're like fires right they like to go out and just be in nature that's all i'm gonna say connect with nature it will give you um some peace of mind then instinct will come through that now transformation on that card what do we get Heed the messengers, right? And I feel, again, we're still connected to this masculine energy. So whether you're a masculine Leo or the part masculine partner of a Leo, I feel like there's some inner yearnings, inner instinct coming about. And even, again, I feel like down the road, this is better, it may be better suited for us down the road when we've evolved. Specifically the male I'm feeling here. I feel the Leo is doing that as they go. But I feel like this male is stunted in the way that they, they kind of get into a relationship and they figure that everything's got to stop and they don't know how to balance that out yet. I feel like, um, yeah, they just don't know how to balance a relationship with work. So they're going, it's either all or nothing. And it's like, nope, nothing. I got to go work, you know? And it's like, no, you can have both. You just need to balance it and respect and all of that. So they haven't figured that out yet. This person is what I'm feeling, or that's the energy I get. Now, on the route, I get a new day dawns. Yeah. So there's new energy here just coming forth, whether it's for that dude or whatnot. Again, the root chakra talking about work and whatnot. That's taking precedence here. Leos can be very much in that energy. We will work above all else and the relationship kind of takes a side step. Um, I feel a greater sense of them knows that's really not imbalanced with everything, but that's what they're doing. That's how their, their technique for, dealing with it which in turn backfires because they're not dealing they're truly avoiding but nonetheless earth angel what do we get here wash away your burdens yeah time to reflect um very much is coming back up again here why so we can understand what happened here um there's a confusion and it may be that we are in confusion for a while longer here we may not understand truly 
Um, but I feel other motives than what we're giving credit for. We think it's for certain reasons, almost like the Leo's going, what do you mean? I'm like going to the gym. I'm eating right. I look better than I've ever looked at it. And it has nothing to do with that, has nothing to do with superficial. It's uh, the burdens of place upon this man. I don't know by who, but there's burdens here. It's just too heavy for him to bear. He can't take. So this is what I'm getting. And we need to. Uh, while well, the partner needs to wash that away on his own, he can't seem to do it in a relationship. He realizes this, so he backs out. And then the Leo themselves, they need to uh, wash away their own burdens. Um, they may have had some going into this relationship, like some baggage that they never quite cleared out, maybe didn't realize until they got in a certain amount of a ways here, right? And so we need to reflect and look at that and kind of deal right? We need to deal and look forward to new directions. Instinctively, we'll be guided, this kind of thing. So the fortune card for the Leos. Wow. <laughs> Proposal or romantic business, sorry, a romantic or business opportunity can be indicated. Now, uh, highly, I felt like for a partner here, like what, one direction or the other, I'm trying to you know, deal with too many energies here. There's someone here that is getting a business proposition. So a merger in that way. I do not feel, unfortunately, that this is a merger, though down the road, once we get all this career stuff in line, this could very well come back in line with the same person. But at this point, I feel like uh, it's a business opportunity somebody's taking that actually puts them away. I know this is contradictory, but pulls them away from the relationship. So we'll see uh, how that fits here. Mm -hmm. And I feel that someone is highly taking into account their instinct to push them in this direction. And they're going, yeah, I got to, I got to take it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, this kind of thing. So I feel more than a proposal. For some, it could be, but that's not the energy I'm picking up. I'm getting it's more of a business decision. And this may be, you know, uncovered after the fact of a, of a split. Or maybe it's just the perception of a split. But this guy may need time, you know, like a, there's a lot of room for error here in judgment. So just keep that in mind it's to kind of... Uh, relax on it a bit and just pause and um, not make any huge heavy judgments at this time because I feel that could um, hinder a coming back of the energy so we'll leave it at that hopefully that helps you that was Leo wow man that's heavy duty different uh, different stuff so Sag first card for Sagittarius my back's getting sore Back to back. Okay. Nine of swords, illusion and stress. So that's goopy energy. We don't want to be in for very long. So we are stressed. We may have a certain viewpoint about something here that is a little off. You may have a perception that's not quite right. Next card, the hangman. We may have made some decisions here or sacrifices because the hangman can be about sacrifice. It can be also be about needing to look at things from a different perspective. I feel if we're stressed, <laughs> truly, we are not looking from the perspective we need to be looking. We need to look differently than what creates the stress. But nonetheless, hints as to what to do. Next card, pleasure seeking and compassion. Queen of Cups. So this is interesting to me. Yeah, I think what they're trying to say here is in order to get out of this illusory state, we need to look at things with compassion and heart rather than the way that we have been, which seems to be a lack thereof. And again, pleasure seeking. Uh, we'll see if we can hit on that later. Illusion and stress. What do we get to expand? Invisible. Yeah. There's a sense here of someone feeling invisible. So we may have some such uh, in an energy of not, uh, like not being... Yeah, they don't feel alive. That's what they said. They don't feel alive. They don't feel seen. They don't feel appreciated, this kind of thing. They're just kind of melting into the background. Nobody's appreciating, no respect, this kind of thing. Okay? 
So there's something missing that they're noticing and that's creating the stress and anxiety that like they don't know how to deal with that. Now, again, this is our perception of not being seen. So is that what we need to look at differently? Now, on top of the in, um, hangman card, which can also uh, deal with energy of, of timing out or taking a time out, time to relax or time away, that, that could also yeah, deal with that. We get the Grove, which talks about, yeah, removing and healing, overall energy of healing, energy that wants to bring you to another mode or way of thinking. On top of the pleasure seeking and compassion, we get complicated. Well, what do you know? <laughs> so things are not just as they seem is the sense here. Now, give me a minute here to tie this all in. This invisible feeling, there's something there that has to be. I feel like um, the Sagittarius is kind of removing themselves. And, they're, and that's really more what is creating this illusion of invisibility it's because they're removing themselves subconsciously consciously it's all of it like they're removing themselves from situations and then they're feeling more isolated there's something here about yeah backing out they're feeling hurt so they're backing away and our perception there's something in our perception the way we're perceiving others um and how they deal with us that is very yeah it's not just face value here i'm gonna read the complicated card because they're just trying to go on instinct alone and they won't let me <laughs> um wouldn't it be nice if life were always simple and things were obvious and transparent this is obviously not where we're at here but sometimes there are so many elements to consider that it can be next to impossible to understand them all in the moment, especially when you want to find an answer. Right now, things are complex and only time will help you put all the pieces of the puzzle together. So just remember, simple can also be boring and complications can make for deeper, more mature experiences. But don't try to figure this one out. Just be open to follow the threads of life's mysterious web. So it's almost like trying to appreciate the, um, not impulsivity, what's the word? The in the momentness of it, right? Being more in the moment. Um, because when we have the answers, it's kind of, yeah, no mystery there. So as we go one deeper on top of the invisible card, we get the garden. Well, isn't that interesting? Because right on top of it, we get the opposite. So invisible is about being alone and kind of reclusive. And the garden is about being out and in public. So being seen, the opposite. Being seen with people, a lot of activity, and this is opposite. So give me a minute. Yeah. It's, yeah, it still plays on that energy. We're removing ourselves from public view. And then we're, we're kind of berating ourselves for it. So it's almost like a self-imposed cycle here. We're removing ourselves and then we're feeling isolated. and blah, blah, blah. So there's a, a weirdness there. Because <laughs> we are really perpetuating our own problem. But we're not perceiving it as such. Again, needing to look at things differently. Um. There's some healing here, but again, it comes off a hurt of something, someone or, and I feel it's very slight, but nonetheless, it's affecting us on levels. Needing to heal from it or recognize, I don't feel we know what, what truly it is. We're just kind of reacting and we're removing ourselves and not really knowing why we're removing ourselves. We're not getting to the heart of the matter, but I feel like the universe is going to kind of help you do that in some kind of way. Now, on top of the growth, which talks about healing, we get the dice, which talks about risk. Give me a moment. And again, behind that was the hangman, which talks to needing to look at things in a different way, needing to sacrifice something. And this may be where the gamble is taken. We may have had an incident here or comment or something that was taken in the wrong vein or 
we're willing to gamble something here, but we got to be careful, right? How we do that. Because the sense they're giving me is we may have had a comment or something said about somebody or someone else or us from someone else or we heard and we're willing to take a gamble with either the information or the person that gave the information. Okay. And we don't, I don't quite know. Again, nothing is at face value here. Things are complicated. It's not just black and white here. So on top of the complicated, we get 33, the key, which is interesting because it talks about complications, but at the same time, it talks about having all the answers here. So technically we have no risk, but I feel like what they're saying is it's a risk to sacrifice something here. Like again, depending on your situation, but in the end, the answer will come to, to bear Meaning after we've made the decision, we'll see that, yes, we should have made this or yeah, agreed. This was the right decision, that kind of thing. There's something here that supports us in a good way that frees us up in this way. Like we recluse um, and it seems to be we take a gamble at striking or taking something off the table and then it, it comes to work out in the end is really what I'm getting. But we may have to take some time to recluse away from people in order to figure it out. Because I'm getting almost like a friendship circle. We got a, um, how do you say, like a mole, eh? <laughs> and And we're trying to take them out and we don't quite know where it sits. But we take a gamble that it's we got to sacrifice a friendship or a relationship or situation or ideas. And what do you know, we made the right decision. So... There's a sense here of, of doing that. And again, not at face value because we had to recluse ourselves in order to put everything in line. One, our instinct. Two, evidence outside of us. Three, you know, things going on outside of them, you know, between that person. And I do feel this is more in a friendship circle, but nonetheless, success, hard won. Okay. So we're going to go into the spiritual side. Well, little maze there <laughs> and the sag spiritual side what do we get yeah three of water going forward triumphantly excitedly ambitiously this is what we're doing a lot of excitement and emotion going forward in this new direction now it may be a direction where we had to lose some weight here like not literally but i mean you know in your french circles maybe someone here was creating havoc and we had to take some time out look at things differently and suddenly figure it out and now we're going forward excited because we've the dead weight's gone right could be that that's really what i'm getting instinctively now the eight of fire that's about charging ahead with confidence right so it's almost like you know now that we've I've <laughs> gotten rid of, you know, it's almost like we've gotten rid of a problem. Now we can truly go forward uninhibited, right? Um, I'm going to read a little bit from this. Eight of fire here. Two forty nine. Change, action, transformation, transmutation, which is interesting because I do feel at a certain point there was something about the energy that they had in their life that was holding them back. And now they've got rid of that energy and now they can move forward unencumbered. Renewed freedom and purpose and joy. Okay, so uh, transformation through action, change on a physical level that brings freedom starting of a new job or quitting of one it's time to move house because the one you are living in restricts or hampers you or is it time to lose a little bit of weight well i said that night <laughs> increase your mobility or physical fitness it is time to set yourself free of unnecessary weight whether it be physical emotional psychological so you can move through with more ease so it may be literal weight here uh, if you need to make real changes in your life, now is the time to do it. No more thinking, planning, or dreaming. Now is the time to get up off the couch, act, transform your life, or take on an idea, possession, something in your life or space to repurpose or transform it. So, yeah, 
and again I, I felt it was more uh for the energy i'm picking up it was in a friendship circle like someone had to go here because it's just holding us back we figured that out and now it's tally ho away we go you know uh but it could also be physical way it could be that dragging us down we're literally physically feeling not well so now we're you know either way it's in a good area we're action oriented and off we go now the next card is emotions well 19 is very interesting to me because it's almost like there's the expression of dark and light energies here and again emphasizing the friendship circle and we have this woman in yellow up top holding the sword of truth and there's stuff balancing on it there's a woman i don't know if you can see it at her knees it's almost like she's repenting because she's done wrong right and again so i see this very much as the the sagittarius and the person that did wrong so i'm gonna read here a little bit because i feel like i'm not quite capturing everything that needs to be said here um emotions okay feelings emotional honesty positive emotion negatives positive feelings and emotions that have the most influence upon us are love joy gratitude peace or serenity hopefulness inspiration amusement pride awe and curiosity we also feel a range of negative emotions with the primary examples being fear anger disgust jealousy sadness regret loss and hate the key message of the emotions card is that feelings and emotions are neither good nor bad, that all are necessary and each and every emotion we experience has both a positive and negative element. Positive and negative exist in all and influence us, whether it be single thought, belief, experience, or emotion. When you hold a simple unmarked magnet in your hand, and look at it, you can tell the difference between the negative pole and the positive pole. No, you cannot. In the same way, negative emotions are undistinguishable, sorry, undistinguishable to positive. Hmm, I don't know about that. Negative is the polar opposite of positive, and like many polar extremes, these do not denote good or bad. They are simply the opposites of each other. Both poles are necessary for us to function in a whole and healthful manner. Okay, there's some things in there, I don't know what question, but... I agree with the, the thing of opposites here. I feel like that's what we had in our field. We had a situation where we had to deal with someone of op opposing, we'll say, in, in whatever way. They were opposing what. And wasn't for our highest good, wasn't for our path, wasn't for us. And we let it go, and it was the right decision. We may have gambled a little bit, uh, not knowing exactly. You know, everything wasn't on blueprint there. But we made that decision, we made the sacrifice. And I feel like it may have, may have come down to our, literally our just our emotions of how we made the decision, right? And that's not a barometer. I, I don't know what they're talking about, not knowing the difference. You, when you're in anger, you're in anger. And when you're in, in love, you're in love. Like those are complete opposites. But anyway, I think I have to look at that deeper. <laughs> Um, but nonetheless, the three of water here, we're going to expand. We get the wheel of life guided by cycles of life and live in complete harmony with them. So paying attention to this, this may be something that's cyclical for you. Um, I feel like this was just a simply a lesson that we needed to move forward. It may have been an advancement in our instinct or, you know, dealing with our emotional center in a way. Uh, where we make quicker, faster decisions. We don't let things linger. I think that's really what this is about for the Sagittarius. Now, on the action-oriented card there, we get Archangel Gabriel, which invites you to hope and intuition. Within your life, bringing hope and intuition. And look at all the white, right? So, again, being true to our purity is what I get here with the lilies. Purity of heart, of compassion, of the direction that we want to come from. 
we're really true to that. And I feel like that really, again, this, the Sag with the sword of truth, they know what the truth is. And this person did wrong. Therefore they're in the dark, you know, they had a lesson and, and they had to be expelled because of it. They could no longer uh, continue with that energy, or maybe that's something that needs to be resolved. Right. Cause if they're at their feet, they may be repenting and needing to, what do you say, absolve that or deal with that and transmute that and make it better. That may be a situation as well, but nonetheless, <sighs> on top of the emotions, we have Raphael. We got, what is it? Gabriel and Raphael. He brings healing and knowledge into life. And I, I think at this position, we all, no matter what instant or lesson or cycle that comes through, we all learn on either side of it. But here I feel um, because the Sagittarian was knew their truth, they were more in a position where they were watching this person gain knowledge, right? And truth into their life. They may have healing that they have to overcome because of this. So there's some healing Raphael energy and some purity of Gabriel that's coming forth because there's changes are happening, really. But good changes. Like Sagittarius finally, not finally, I'm saying finally, but because it feels like such a long, drawn-out process. It's like, you know, we really can't get to a point here where we cannot worry about this. We have to deal with this stuff all the time. So there's a sense of um, frustration with either people that are fooling us or trying to fool us or people that are trying to do harm to us, but pretending to be good, this kind of thing, that kind of stuff. So the wheel of life, what do we get there? Let two become one. Um, I got to go back to see what energy was sitting there. Yeah. Looking forward again in a love direction. So the sense I get here is we weren't really tapping or this may be for some uh, in a relationship way where they've, you know, went from one relationship to another, there's a sacrifice. But for some, I feel like um, it was in a friendship way. But nonetheless, there's a sense here of wanting to unite uh, with a partner. Now, that's the change that's going to come to be. So for some, uh, it will be a change of partners. Now, on this Gabriel energy, the purity and the truth that we're coming from, look at that, show that you care this the frequency is changing all of a sudden, but it's in a good way. It's almost like uh, I'm going from one person's energy to another. So I feel like there may be some people in transition of relationships. They need to show more that they care outward to those that they truly feel guided to. Um, and this will help, you know, obviously that's going to help, right? Uh, and then, of course, Raphael bringing the healing, uh, be without malice. So, yeah, beware of any situations that you've had in the past that um, can bring this to your present. Like, deal with the malice. And I know it's easy to say these things. I, I've been physicians myself. Um, you just got to feel it out. <laughs> feel it out, literally. That's the only way it can go is if you feel it. Otherwise, it will build into rage and malice and and they want you to come from compassion going forward into and and it's like if there's not a loving relationship there or uniting of such this can be in the future but we have to come from our compassion and show that we care to those that we do care for and you know don't necessarily go outward in the malice that we feel for those i feel like there's a great sacrifice here where'd that card go is it here? Yeah. There's a great sacrifice here that had to happen to someone in our past. And we just got to kind of process that maybe to a degree that we don't hold malice for it. Okay. So I'm going to go straight to the fortune card for the Sag here. And they get the eagle. It says you will soar towards your destiny with greater clarity and strength. Why? Because we did, we had a lesson here that was unfolding. Um, a lesson of truth and purity really is what I'm getting. Like we were true to who we were. We stood up for what was right and we're going forward in that. And, you know, 
emotional processes. Yeah, there's some lingering here baggage that needs to be dealt with yet. But on an intellectual level, we truly understand that we, we did the right thing. But we have to process that on an emotional level. And the eagles there saying, you know, you will be, you know, soaring towards your destiny um, in greater truth once this is done and strength when you process your emotional from all of this is the sense I get. It's a bit of a gamble that has been happening and a bit of a, you know, um, moving away from people and situations in order to gain, yeah, headway. But uh, again, the key here, this is a very lucky card because it, it really, we have all that we need to move forward. So we just have to feel good in that. Things may be complicated at the moment, but it will become clearer. There's some healing that needs to happen, no less. So that is the fire signs. Only. Sag being the more lighter and advanced of the three here, uh, definitely going in a good direction, though. So hopefully that helps you for the week. Again, these are just weekly energies, but man, they're deep and heavy and whoa, complicated. <laughs> So anyway, take care, have fun and be kind. Uh, hope you have a good week or weekend. It's week we're going into here by the time I get the videos out. And we will see you next week for that. Again, again, the numbers, I go by my order. I go by the numbers of views. So if you want your sign, yeah, fire seems to be last in the last two views. So if you want your sign red, just, I don't know. Increase the numbers, I guess. <laughs> Take care, you guys. Have fun. Be kind.